welcome to lecture 20, the design of control unit part 4. So, till now what we have seen, we have seen the various internal bus architecture and uh, we have also seen that uh, how various instructions are executed, basically the control signals of various instructions. Now, we will look into the approaches that are required for generation of this control signals. What kind of approaches are there? Broadly, there are two types of approaches. One is hardware control unit design and micro programmed control unit design. So, what we are trying to say that we know that for this instruction, these are the control signals that are required to be generated. But now, these control signals must be generated in a proper sequence. What do you mean by that? So, let us take an example. So, we say that in T 1, what is performed? P C out M A R in read select y sorry select 4 add z in. So, at t 1 for all the instructions these signals must be generated. Similarly, in step 2 some, some more instruction, step 3 some more instruction and so on. So, the point is at T 1 we need P C out, M A R in, read, select 4, add and Z in. These signal must be generated in a proper sequence. Then in T 2 we require another set of instruction. At T 3 we require another set of instruction. So, the processor must generate the control signals for the data path in a proper sequence. So, whatever data path it is there, so it must generate the control sequence in a proper control signals in proper sequence for execution. So, we will be looking into two approaches. One is hardware control unit design, another is micro programmed control unit design. Coming to hardware control unit design, let us see what we have here. We have a clock which is hitting the control step counter. The control step counter is connected to a step decoder. So, it generates the control the steps basically the step counter generates the steps that are required by an instruction to generate the control signals. So, at these steps T 1, T 2, T 3 various control signals will get generated depending on which instruction we are using, what is the step of that instruction, whether some external inputs are required for it or not if some conditional codes needs to be checked or not. So, depending on all we see that in this encoder the content of this step decoder, the content of instruction decoder and the external inputs and the condition codes all are getting inputted and the encoder is encoding based on that encoder encoding the control signals are generated. So, we will be looking into each and every aspect of this instruction decoder, step decoder, we already know conditional codes. For every ALU operation certain uh, flags gets set and depending on the condition codes can be considered. External inputs, what can be the external input? An MFC, memory function complete, that is an external input that comes from a different module that is memory and there are two more signals, one is run, another is end, 
we will be seeing why we are requiring this. But you see this entire structure. So, this entire structure is basically doing what? It is generating control signals. How it is generating control signals? Depending on which instruction it is, depending on which step it is and if there is some external inputs for that. Depending on all these three, this encoder will generate the control signals. So, this we already know that this is the sequence of control signals for add R1 comma LOCA. So, for add R1 comma LOCA, these are the set of instruction that are executed. So, in hardware control unit design, there is an assumption that each step in this sequence is completed in one clock cycle. But remember one thing that when we are reading something from the memory, it may not be completed in one clock cycle. We cannot ensure that if we are reading it from the memory, it will be completed in one clock cycle. But this is an assumption that we have taken. A counter is used to keep track of the time step. So, a counter, a step counter is there which keep track of the time step. Like, let us see the previous instruction. Here, how many steps are required? 7 steps are required. Some instruction might take 8 steps, some instruction might take 4 steps or 5 steps. So, this has to be taken care. So, counter is used to keep track of the time step. The control signals are determined by the following information. What are the following information? The content of the control step counter, content of the instruction register, content of conditional code flags and external input such as MFC. We have already seen that uh, the encoder is taking input of the step decoder, taking input of the instruction register and it is also taking the conditional code and external inputs. Depending on all, it is generating the control signal. So, that is what it is saying that the control signals are determined by the following information. Content of control step counter, content of instruction register and content of conditional code flags and external input signals such as MFC. Now, let us see this. The encoder decoder circuit is a combinational circuit which generates the control signals depending on the inputs provided. So, whatever be the input from the step decoder, instruction register, external inputs and conditional code, the uh, encoder decoder circuitry will be um, will generate the control signals. Now, see the step decoder generates separate signal line for each step in the control sequence. So, at step 1, PC out, MAR in, read, select 4, add, Z in happens. At T 2, Z out, PC in, Y in is happening and in step 3, MDR out, IR in is happening. So, at various steps, various time steps, different, different control signals are getting executed. So, how many steps we require? This is dependent on the maximum steps required by an instruction. The step decoder is designed depending on the maximum steps required for an instruction. So, let us say we have 20 instruction, total instruction in our instruction set architecture and every instruction takes 4 steps, 6 steps, 7 steps and uh, maximum steps that is required for an instruction is let us say 8. We do not, uh, none of the instruction takes more than 8 steps. Then what will be the size of your step decoder? We need to generate a maximum of 8 steps. So, a 3 cross 8 decoder will do. 
but if the maximum step is 10 in that case the step decoder size will be 4 cross 16. In case we require only maximum of 8 step for any instruction maximum 8 step for any instruction in that case a 3 cross 8 decoder will do, but for other if it requires more then we will be requiring 4 cross 16 decoder. So, if a maximum of stems, 10 steps are required, then a 4 cross 16 step decoder is used. Among the total set of instructions, the instruction decoder is used to select one of them. That particular line will be 1 and the rest will be 0. So, depending on uh, total number of instruction, let us say we have a total of uh, 30 instructions. So, if we have a total of 30 instructions, how many bits will be required to encode it? We will require 5 bits because 5 cross 32 decoder will be used. So, output at, at any point of the time depending on the input, any one line will be 1 and the rest will be 0. So, it can encode 30 instructions. Similarly, if you have 100 instructions, how many bits will be required to encode that? we require 7 bits because 2 to the power 7, 100 is less than 2 to the power 7. So, 7 bits will be required and we require a 7 cross 128 decoder. So, this is what is said here. If a maximum of 100 instructions are present in an instruction set architecture, then a 7 cross 128 instruction decoder is used. At every clock cycle, the run signal is used to increment the counter by 1. When the run is 0, the counter stops running. This signal is needed when WMFC is issued. Now, see what we are trying to say. There is a signal run. So, uh, when the step decoder value is at, at step T1 for instruction add, certain set of control signals will get generated. After that step is performed, then we need to move to the next step that is T2. So, while moving to T2, what we need to do? We need to move from T1 to T2. So, the step, step counter will increment to T2 and now whatever is performed, what is, whatever is the assigned job for T2, it will get executed and similarly, the step counter will go on incrementing. So, this run signal is basically used to do this. Run is basically getting, it helps the step counter to increment the steps of any instruction. Similarly, this when the run is 0, the counter stops counting. And when this run is required to be 0, this is required for WMFC. See, when we are doing WMFC, we will not be executing the next one until we get the confirmation that the data is available. Then only we can take that data because we have to operate on that data. If that data is not present, we cannot operate. So, when that is so, the run becomes 0 at that particular time and when it starts to run, again it will keep on running. So, this is for within an instruction incrementing to the next, next step, next step and next step. Now, the end signal starts a new instruction. End signal means what? We have completely executed one instruction and now we will be moving on, moving to the next instruction. Once we have completely executed one instruction, it will be fully done and then we have to again reset the step decoder. So, the step, the, the, the counter basically needs to be reset. So, this is done using the end signal. So, the end signal starts a new instruction. It resets the control step counter to its starting value. So, that the next instruction can be started. Now, in the hardware control unit design, the sequence of operation carried out by the control unit is determined by the wiring of the logic elements 
and hence it is named hardware. Now, we see that it is a it is basically a circuit, it is a combinational circuit, we are giving inputs and we are getting an output. So, this is basically it depends on the wiring, how you have put on everything in place, how you have placed the encoder, how you have used the step decoder, everything and ultimately this is the wiring and all will determine the entire thing. Hence, it is called hardware control unit design and this approach of control unit design is fast, but limited to the complexity of instruction set that is implemented. So, we cannot have very complex instructions implemented in using hardware, but simple instruction can be executed and it will be much fast and efficient, but we cannot have very complex instruction implemented here. It can be implemented with more complex structure. The complexity increases that uh, uh, flexibility will go off. So, keeping the flexibility of this hardware, simple instructions are basically uh, implemented using hardware control unit design. Let us now see these three set of instructions together. These are the control signals required for add R1, R2 add R1 comma LOCA and branch to a level. So, at various time steps following control signals are getting generated. Based on this particular three instructions only, I will now generate the signal using hardware control unit, hardware design for PC in an end. Now, see what is PC in? If you go back we have to see where we have PC in. In T1, we do not have PC in for anyone and in T2, we have PC in for all the instructions and then we see that we do not have any PC in for add, we do not have any PC in for add R1 comma LOCA, but we have PC in, in time step 5 for branch. So, we can take this into consideration that PC in signal is activated at T2 for all the instructions and PC in is activated for branch instruction in T5. When the sequence is T5 and it is branch, then PC in is there and it is there for all other instruction at T2. So, we can write the control signal PC in as T2 for all instructions plus at T5 when it is branch instruction only. So, this is an AND, branch and T5 then only PC in will be there. So, we can this logic expression can be written in the form of this logic gate, where T5 and branch is connected with an AND gate, which is connected to the input of an OR gate. So, this expression can be implemented using this logic function. Similarly, let us see END. When this signal END happens, END happens at T6 for add with registers values, end happens at T5 for branch instruction and end happens for T7 for add instruction, add with memory. So, we see that end is here when adding with register values at T6, add with memory location it is there at T7 and end is there at T5 when it is branch. So, we can have a logic expression at T6 for add with register, at T5 for branch and at T7 for add with memory. So, 
you can see that we can implement this using the following logic expression and following logic gate, where these are connected with AND gate and this is connected finally with the OR gate. So, end signal can be generated using this particular circuit. Now, coming to microprogrammed control unit design. So, in microprogrammed control unit design, we have a structure like this. So, what do we have here? The instruction register will give a starting address generator and this starting address generator will hit a mu PC. So, we will have within computer a small place where we will be doing a similar kind of function like a computer. So, here the IR will provide the starting address which will hit to the mu PC. So, the mu PC will hit to a memory that memory is known as control store. So, at every clock this mu PC content of mu PC will hit to some very high speed memory called control store and based on a particular instruction provided by the IR and the starting address generator, this control store will provide a control word and this control word is nothing but it will give the information about the control signals which will be on and off, which will be which is required to be activated at what time period that will be provided in the control word. So, let us see in at this point of time we need to understand about some of the definitions. Control signals are generated by a program similar to machine language program like we were doing what? We were fetching an instruction from memory then the PC was getting incremented to the next address and again we were fetching we were performing certain operation. Similar to that we will be doing something here. So, the control signals are generated by a program similar to machine language program. The control store, control store is a place which stores the micro routines for all the instructions of a instruction set architecture. So, here the micro routines, micro routines is nothing but all the control signals that are required for a particular instruction that is the micro routine. We will be seeing that. So, the control store stores the micro routine for all the instructions of an instruction set architecture. The sequence of steps corresponding to a control sequence of a machine instruction is the micro routine, the sequence of steps. So, if an instruction requires four steps for execution, all the sequence of steps can be regarded as a micro routine for that particular instruction. Each sequence of steps in a control word whose individual bits represent the various control signals. So, each sequence of step in a control word. So, control word is a memory where we are storing so many things. So, let us say this is a control word 1 0 0 1 0 1 0 1 1 1 0 0 0 0 1 0 something like this we have. So, what we can say here is that let us say this is step 1, this is step 2 and this is step 3. So, this is basically my control store and what we are storing here? We are storing control words, these are control words and each sequence of steps in a control word whose individual bits represent the various control signal, meaning this is a control word and its individual bits represent some control signal. So, these are individual control signals that are on or off. That means, it is either active or not active. 
and individual control words in a micro routine are called micro instructions and this individual control word one one control word is called the micro routine or in a micro routine is called the micro instructions. Now let us see this. So as I said IR instruction register will depending on an instruction it will generate the starting address generator that will hit to the mu PC and then mu PC is will hit the control store and from where the control words will get generated at every clock period. So, at every clock period the mu PC will get incremented by the required amount and then from the control store each of the control words will be generated and the control word will give which particular control signals is required to be 1 or which particular control signal is required to be 0. So, as I have already discussed this control unit generates the control signals for an instruction by sequentially reading the control words of the corresponding micro routine from control store. So, control store stores the control words or we can say it stores a micro routine. The mu PC is used to read the control word sequentially from the control store. So, mu PC hits the control store and it sequentially reads the control word one by one by one. So, every time a new instruction is loaded into IR because we when we are executing one instruction that particular starting address will be generated in mu PC and accordingly this will happen. Same way if the next instruction needs to get executed then the next instruction will get loaded in the mu PC in the, then the starting address of that particular uh, instruction will get loaded into the mu PC and accordingly from the control store uh, the control words will get generated. The mu PC is automatically incremented by clock causing successive micro instructions to be read from control store. So, this is how it is stored. Let us say there will be many more control signals for add R1, R2. In step 1, what all control signals are 1, rest will be all 0. So, PC out, MAR in, read select 4 add z 1 z in these signals will be 1 and rest will be all 0. Similarly, in step 2 we need to do z out p c in y in. So, see z out will be 1 y in is 1 and p c in is 1. At the same time we have to wait for memory function complete because we have performed a read operation here in the first step. Similarly, in this step these two signals will be activated and rest will be 0. So, this is m d r out i r in. Similarly, in the step 4 for this instruction we need to perform R1 out Y in and then what we are performing? We are performing R2 out select Y add and Z in. So, in Z now my operation is my result is which should be stored in R1. So, I have to do a Z out and R1 in. So, this is a control store for add R1, R2. What it stores? This is a micro routine for this particular instruction and these are the micro instruction and these are stored in control, this is a control store and these are the control words that are read each time. So, the mu PC will be loaded with the starting address and then at every clock period this will get incremented by 1 1 and it will be fetched from the control store. Similarly, for branch we have shown. 
So, similarly for branch first 3 will be same and for this particular thing we have to do select y. So, if select 4 is 1 select y will be 0 and we perform add z in uh, and then we also perform i r out because uh, the offset field of i r out should be available that will be added with y, y contain the previous p c value we do perform an add we do z in and finally, we perform z out and p c in p c will be loaded with the new value that needs to be performed for the branch that means, we need to go to that particular location for that branch. So, this is how the control store looks like for branch. Now, there are two ways, two alternative ways to code the control signals in the control memory. The first way is the horizontal micro instruction encoding, the one I have just shown. So, each control signals is represented by a bit in the micro instruction and fewer control store words with more bits per word is required. So, fewer, fewer control store words are required, but we require more bits per word meaning here you see that only a few signals will be 1, rest all signals many are 0, only few are 1, but we still need to keep all. Why? Because we have made it in such a fashion parallelly we this can happen, we are keeping for all the set of control signals we are having, we are keeping this particular size. So, the size of this control word will be dependent on the total number of control signals which are present. So, fewer control store words will be required with more bits per word, each word will contains more number of bits. Compared to vertical micro instruction encoding, here each control word represent a single micro instruction in encoded form. So, if k bit control word can support up to 2 to the power k micro instructions and more control store words with fewer bits per word. What do we mean by this? Let us say we have a total of 100 control signals. In case of horizontal control unit design, we require 100 bits for 1111 control word, but in this case we require only 7 bits. So, at a time only one control signals can get activated, because we are encoding using just 7 bit not per word 100 bit, per control word earlier from horizontal it was 100 bits, but for this we only require 7 bits. So, that is what k bit control word can support up to 2 to the power k micro operation. So, if we have 100 then only 7 bits will suffice. So, there can be trade off between horizontal and vertical micro instruction encoding and sometime referred to as diagonal micro instruction encoding. So, what we do here is that the control signals are groups into some sets and such control signals within a set are mutually exclusive. So, let us consider R 1 out, let us consider the single bus architecture. So, can we perform R 1 out and R 2 out together or M D R out together? No, any one of the operation can be performed at a time. So, we can group it into a mutually exclusive set. In one set we know that we do not need it for so many, but we require less number of bits to encode that. Let us say if there are 32 instruction, so we will just require 5 bits to encode that. Earlier we were using 32 bits for that. So, the control signals are grouped into sets such that the control signals within a set are mutually exclusive. 
So, what is the summary out of this? So, horizontal encoding supports unlimited parallelism among micro instruction. So, any we can parallelly perform so many micro operations or those control signals can be activated at a time. Vertical encoding support strictly sequential execution of micro instructions. Only fewer bits are required, we require less storage, but it is sequentially performed. It will not help for fast execution where the demand is for fast execution. Diagonal encoding does not sacrifice the required level of parallelism, but uses less number of bits per control word as compared to horizontal encoding. So, we can see that diagonal encoding is the best where we analyze the control signals depending on the architecture that we are using and based on that we divide into two groups and we know that within that group only one operation can be performed. So, in such cases we can perform this. So, diagonal encoding is considered as the best among horizontal and vertical so, I will explain it in some detail. So, horizontal micro instruction encoding. So, these are the control signals. Suppose there are k control signals, then in horizontal encoding, every control word store in the control memory consists of k bits, one bit for every control signal. So, in this case, several bits in the control word can be one parallel activation of the several micro operation in a single time step is possible, but it is seen that uh, in such kind of scenario where we have uh, uh, a very large control word, many bits are zeros and few bits are 1. That the meaning is the bits, uh, the control signal which needs to be activated for that time period is 1 and the rest are 0. The advantage is unlimited parallelism is possible in the activation of the micro operations, but the disadvantage being the sign, size of the control memory. So, we also need to look into this because if you want to have a control memory which is very large, this cost will be much higher. So, in vertical micro instruction encoding where we see that m bits a decoder is used for it. So, for k control signal we require uh, k that is less than equals to 2 to the power m. So, m bits will be required for it depending on m bit control word exactly one control signal will be activated which is 1 while all others will be 0, but the number of bits required is much less at most one control signal can be activated at a time. So, we cannot do PC out, MAR in uh, and all those signals at one go. We can only do first PC out, then in the next step uh, PC out, MAR in, then uh, read, then uh, select Y and so on. So, all can be done in 1111 step. So, the advantage here is it requires much smaller word size in control memory, low cost implementation. If you do not uh, want high speed implementation, you can go for such kind of thing, but when speed is a vital concern, this method cannot be taken into consideration. So, the disadvantage here is more than one control signals cannot be activated at a time, requires sequential activation of the control signal and hence more number of time steps will be required here. The option is diagonal micro instruction encoding which is quite flexible. So, here also we require decoder. So, we group the set of k control signals into s groups containing k 1, k 2, k 5. So, this group is having mutually exclusive instruction, this group is having mutually exclusive instruction and we know that at a time only one signal from this group will get activated. So, we encode the control signals in group as shown, where k i is less than equals to 2 to the power m i, this is depending on the size. So, within a group at most one control signal can be activated in a time step, parallelism across groups is allowed. Also, 
the number of bits required is less and also we can have parallelism. So, by studying the architecture well in advance, we can design such kind of uh, uh, micro instruction encoding and inst encoding can be done to design a uh, control unit. So, the advantage here is maximum parallelism as required by the micro program can be supported and the word size of the control memory is less than the for horizontal encoding and this is used in practice. This is basically what is used in practice because parallelism can be exploited as well as the space is uh, minimized. Multiple encoders though smaller in sizes are required. So, that will take up some space, some area. Let us take an example. Suppose there are 100 control signals in a processor data path. So, for horizontal encoding, uh, control word size will be 100 bits. So, each will be 100 bits. For vertical encoding log 2, log base 2 to 100, so 7 bits will be required. And for diagonal encoding, suppose after analysis, uh, it has been generated that the groups, the following groups can be made. That is the following groups of mutually exclusive signals can be made that is 25, 15, 40, 5 and 15. So, in each of the cases, let us understand how many bits will be required and what will be the size of the decoder that is required. So, we have M1, first one, first group 25. So, 2 to the power 5 that is 35 is less than 25, so 5 bits. Similarly, this is 15 which is less than 2 to the power 4, so it will be 4. This is less than 2 to the power 6, so it will be 6. This will be 2 to the power 3 less than that, so it will be 3 and this will be 4. So, the control word size will be 5 plus 4 plus 6 plus 3 and plus 4 which is 22. So, we if we just need 7 bits, it will be much much slower, we cannot afford to have this. And if we take 100 bits also, the space is too large. So, this is quite a feasible thing which we can take up that is horizontal um, that is diagonal encoding, where we exploit both the features. So, we came to the end of lecture 20, where we have discussed about the various ways we can generate control signals and by this uh, we have also come to the end of control unit design, but in next two lectures we will be looking particularly how the control unit of MIPS is designed. Thank you.